Morning guys, I got a cool mask yesterday and I wanted to unbox it but I actually had to use it at work so I'm kind of doing like a second hand unboxing. Just having my break here now with you and going to do a little time lapse with the GoPro strapped to my chest today, powder coating. Got the Sun the Sunstrom SR200. Sorry guys, it's the Sunstrom SR200, not the Sandstorm SR200. So anyway, my bosses are really awesome and they bought me this because I've been doing a little bit more powder coating and it's really good for long exposure work in a hazardous environment. So the old one was the same brand and we just had the filter, that, like the filter there with the single one at the front, twin exhalers. And the new one weighs about 450 grams. This is how you'll get it. It comes with a manual and stuff, but I left it at work yesterday. So it comes like this, and it's got a silicon body, polycarbonate front, convex polycarbonate front to get a wide, wide field of view. And I can tell you, that actually is really good. I haven't had it fog up yet. There's two vents here, so that one third of the air before it gets to your nose goes past the screen, so that it doesn't fog it up. And two thirds of the air goes straight to your nose, mouth however you're breathing. And these are the filters we use. This is a dust filter, because powder, dust, whatever. Um, so yeah, silicon body weighs 450 grams. I think you can probably get these for around 500, 550 dollars. But um, yeah, so it's got a fabric strap up the top so that it doesn't pinch your hair. Uh, that's one thing I've had in the past with my hair, even if I wear it in a ponytail, when I pull this off, it really like, hurts so yeah it's got that net up the top instead of straps and it's got two four six sets of straps two of them are like a quick release easy thing where you can just rip it off and it's got like when it comes you'll have to put that in there you can rip that off um, there are there those exhalers I was talking about and yeah it's pretty simple you just rip it over like this Oops. I've tightened that as I'm talking Anyway, um, that's it. You can probably take it to Woolies or Coles at the moment and not get coronavirus and look the part. But um, today we're going to do a vlog, like I said, and I'll be using this. You probably won't see it because the GoPro probably strapped to my head. But um, yeah, just there you guys what it looks like. New tool, pretty keen about that. And we'll see you in a second. So this is sanding down the workpiece because they're so heavy when they're in the blast room sometimes they get scratched and can get a bit of concrete in them which then reacts in the oven to the powder coating and comes up shit so yep uh, these bridge railings were getting zinced which is what's happening now and then satin black over the top of the zinc after it's cooled down the bridge railings are really heavy and take a long time to cool down so you have to be a bit strategic about what goes in the oven and then what cools down and yeah this is the satin black going over it now I prefer doing the top coat mainly because the sandblasted steel looks exactly like the zinc coat so for me in particular it's hard to tell where the powder coat is compared to where it's raw whereas black over the grey is a lot easier so yeah yeah, after a while it can get a little bit monotonous, but one thing I've been listening to, and I reckon if you're powder coating for a while, you should listen to the Fast Life podcast. It's pretty awesome. Because they chat about, like, you know, motorbikes, painting motorbikes, and motorbike helmets and stuff. So, yeah, go ahead and check it out. So, yeah, everyone's got a different way of working, but I feel like the best way to do something like this is start from the top and work your way down, mainly because if you start from the top, you can get the excess powder will drop on the workpiece below, whereas if you start on the bottom and work your way up the top, then sometimes excess, you might get too much excess down the bottom. This is the cool down satin black on the trolleys after it's come out of the oven. Basically now is where you, um, feel over it to feel for a nice smooth glossy finish if it is rough there's a uh, fair chance that it's uh, 
light, which means you haven't put applicated enough powder onto the workpiece. These ones look pretty good, and for what it is, it's uh, just an industrial coating. And yeah, this is what we sort of look for. All right, what's up guys? It's actually the next day, but I'm painting gloss black, which is in a bit of contrast to the black satin, same brand, Dulux. And um, I've got these rims of uh, 41 wheelies for a customer. And I think he said they were banded in the 60s or something. So they're a bit custom, but they're chrome on the inside. So we've blasted what we can. Chrome is really hard to blast, especially depending on the quality of it. So um, any bits that have peeled off, so to speak. I'm just sanding the edge over that. And and like just to take the take any sharp edges off and then we're coating them in gloss black. We've got some other stuff for gloss black too. Um, and I've got to cut these tire valves off because the rubber in there will cook in the oven and run out and destroy the job. Go on. Stealing issue. Um, then you'll cut them out and paint these. I don't know what these are off. They kind of look like they're for holding, but it's only four, four stud and it's tiny, so it's not them. And yeah, so it's going to be interesting to show you the difference between satin and gloss because I'm not putting the clear over these. With the gloss black in powder coating, it's not as glossy as you may think, so... Oh. Oh. Alright, just done some safety yellow and the gloss black has come out of the oven and this is what it looks like.